listen closely, because a major atmospheric shift is about to unfold. One that will reignite widespread winter weather for millions across the country. As we step into 2026, the atmosphere is reconfiguring itself in a way that favors larger, more aggressive storm systems. Reopening the door to heavy snow, powerful winter storms, and renewed severe weather across vast regions of the United States. But before this broader pattern fully locks in, a potentially historic snow event is already in progress. A powerful snowstorm is targeting the Great Lakes and the Northeast, where some locations could be buried under 20 to 50 inches of snow. This is being driven by intense, persistent lake effect snow bands that are expected to anchor in place and refuse to budge. Just outside of Syracuse, New York, snowfall totals could surpass 50 inches within the next 40 hours. Let that sink in. 50 inches of snow in less than two days over four feet of accumulation in a time span shorter than most weekend trips. This is the type of event that dominates national headlines, paralyzes entire communities, and becomes a benchmark storm people talk about for decades. Once this extraordinary snow event finally winds down, the atmosphere ramps up nationwide. The jet stream is expected to transition into a meridional flow pattern next week, a configuration that keeps the atmosphere highly unsettled, energetic, and volatile. This setup supports the return of winter storms and even severe weather for millions as we move through much of next week and beyond. So buckle in because we're breaking down everything you need to know about the weather pattern shift that will define the opening chapter of Nikas. Only Ruby Kiss has the luxurious texture, move, my whip. It's sixture, macaws, my zalize, and leaves a rich. Nikas, my as a lies. Nika, my leads, my lies, my lies, camuse. My alas, compa, camuse, 2026. Let's start with the jet stream. Because it is the primary driver controlling weather across the United States over the next seven days. Understanding the jet stream is absolutely essential to understanding what's coming. And if you want specific forecasts for your city or region, drop them in the comments aisle. Respond individually as time allows. If you enjoy the breakdown, a like and subscription would be greatly appreciated. Right now, the jet stream is angled sharply out of the northwest, cutting across the Ohio Valley, Midwest, and Northeast. This configuration is funneling Arctic air directly southward at this very moment. We saw dangerous snow squalls tear through parts of Ohio, Pennsylvania, and New York last night. Producing near whiteout conditions, the kind where visibility collapses instantly and travel becomes life-threatening within seconds. After those squalls moved through, what remained was a deep reservoir of bitter Arctic air. And that cold is firmly entrenched across the Great Lakes region. Unfortunately, this isn't a short-lived blast. Over the next several days, the jet stream maintains its northwest orientation, allowing frigid air to stay locked in place from North Dakota all the way to Maine. Meanwhile, a high-pressure system begins building over the southern plains. It won't peak immediately, but it will steadily strengthen through Sunday and Monday, ushering in warmer, drier air across the West Coast and much of the Great Plains. That ridge won't intensify rapidly at first. However, because a compact shortwave trough tied to Pacific Energy will sweep through, this disturbance will bring periods of heavy rain and the potential for isolated, severe storms across the Southeast late Friday night into Saturday. If you're in the Southeast, be prepared. The severe threat may not be extreme, but damaging wind gusts and even an isolated tornado cannot be ruled out, especially across parts of Florida, Georgia, and South Carolina. Winter systems interacting with moisture and instability always demand close attention. By Sunday into Monday, the weather pattern undergoes a dramatic transformation this is where everything changes. A powerful high-pressure system will rapidly intensify across the Great Plains, opening the door to record challenging warmth across portions of the Central Plains.
Midwest and Mississippi River Valley early next week. At the same time, the polar jet stream is shoved far north, while strong troughing develops along the west coast. This sets the stage for significant storm systems to slam the west coast Sunday and Monday as those western storms weaken and move inland. Their energy will spill eastward, igniting a more active pattern across the Great Plains, Midwest, Ohio Valley, and eventually the East Coast. By the middle of next week, the atmosphere becomes decidedly active, and as storm systems cross the Rockies under continued western troughing, we're likely looking at multiple storm events during the first half of January. In short, this isn't a one-off situation. The stage is being set for a busy, dynamic, and impactful start to 2026. And the atmosphere is only just getting started. We're on the verge of seeing some major storm systems develop, likely within the next weekend, for some of you, even sooner. On top of that, there's a truly wild snow event about to unfold that deserves a much closer look. One of the dominant storylines over the next seven days is temperature volatility. Right now, we're dealing with well below average temperatures stretching from North Dakota all the way through the Northeast. Even Florida is running colder than normal. You might be wondering why I'm wearing a hoodie and that's because it's 35 degrees in Florida something that almost never happens. I'm genuinely cold right now. And just to clarify, the weather is not responsible for what my hair is doing today, that one's on me. Not the atmosphere. Meanwhile, across the Great Plains and along the West Coast, temperatures are currently above seasonal norms. As we head into Friday and Saturday, heat begins building across the Gulf Coast and into the Southeast allowing warmer air to return while cold conditions stubbornly hold on across the Northeast by Monday and Tuesday. However, the pattern flips dramatically nationwide. We'll see the threat of record challenging warmth surge back into parts of North Dakota, South Dakota, and the Texas Panhandle. By Tuesday, temperatures climb even higher across the Great Plains and Midwest. In Nebraska, some locations could end up 35 degrees above average, which is exceptionally warm for this time of year. Then comes Wednesday and Thursday, and it's more of the same, just on a larger scale. Nearly everything east of the Rockies is expected to run well above normal. If you're in California, Oregon, or Washington, relief is finally on the way. After dealing with persistent warmth for over a week, cooler more comfortable conditions are expected to return out west. Now, let's be clear, this warm pattern is anything but wintry. But what comes after this warmth is where things turn interesting. Prolonged warmth like this often sets the stage for a strong Arctic backlash. And I believe we're likely to see a significant Arctic blast sometime around mid-January that would dramatically improve the setup for snow and ice especially since much of the country has seen very little ice so far this season. I expect our first notable ice storms to emerge around the middle of the month. For perspective, here are today's high temperatures. Notice how bitterly cold it is across the Midwest and Northeast. While the Southern Plains are enjoying much warmer readings, including 70s in parts of Texas, Florida, meanwhile, is stuck in the 60s, which is actually chilly by local standards. But as we move into early next week, temperatures skyrocket. By Monday, parts of South Dakota could reach the low 60s. While areas near Springfield, Illinois approach the mid-50s, it's going to feel shockingly warm. Now, let's talk about the insane snowfall totals. The HRRR model is highlighting a very small, county-sized area just outside of Syracuse that could receive 40 to 50 inches of snow. And that's within the next 48 hours, with most of it falling in just 36 hours. This is extreme lake effect snow straight off Lake Ontario. Communities just north of Syracuse and just south of Watertown are facing a major snowfall event. What makes this truly astonishing is the razor-sharp cutoff. Travel just 10 miles north toward Watertown and snowfall could drop to almost zero. 
We're talking about a 10 to 20 mile gradient separating no snow from nearly 4 feet of accumulation. That level of precision is both remarkable and dangerous. These lake effect bands can turn clear skies into total whiteout conditions in minutes. Once this snow event wraps up on Saturday, attention shifts south. A storm system moving across the southeast will bring a low-end tornado risk to parts of Florida, Alabama, Georgia, and Mississippi. Overall, the risk remains limited, with the Storm Prediction Center outlining a marginal severe weather threat. Future radar shows scattered morning showers, followed by storms intensifying across Georgia. Shortly after midday, while the environment isn't particularly favorable for widespread tornadoes, conditions are sufficient for a few to develop, primarily between 2 p.m. and 8 p.m. after sunset. Storms are expected to organize into a more linear structure across Florida, Georgia, and South Carolina, producing an isolated damaging wind threat before weakening overnight into Sunday. Thank you guys, see you tomorrow.